Hey everybody, I'm Dominic from XBDIY.com. This video is a request by Sajara, I believe I'm saying the name right, wanting to know about load-bearing walls on a house. Great, okay, here we go. Now, typically when people ask me, I tell them, you see your gutters on the house? How they're running? Gutters on the house? Typically, that's gonna be a load-bearing wall. And if you look over here, over here we have a gable end of the house, but yet we have a little gutter there and a you know, bigger one on the other side. So typically that wall there, because you see the way the roof is, that's not load bearing. Where these other walls, way up on top here, those are load bearing. So our roof starts from the front, goes up, and then goes back down. So basically I know where the loads are in the house and which way, more importantly, is which way our floor and ceiling joists are running. So I know they're going to be running perpendicular to the gutter, so going from front to the back. So let's go in the basement of this house and we'll go all the way up to the attic. We'll go all the way up to the attic. Okay, now we're in the basement of this house. This is, of course, it's a basement wall, so it's supporting, right? Concrete. Um, okay, this is the front of the house. Where I was just standing, this is the front of the house. Now if you look up here, we have our floor joists resting on this wall, but then they're going this way. So let me give you another shot of what's going on okay. here. So if you look here, we have our beam now. Our beam is what's holding up this section of floor joists, and then another section, uh, let me see if I can actually move some of this insulation out of the way. See if you can get a shot right in there, okay? You see this floor joist running from one wall to the beam, and then the start of another one, because they're overlapping there, Rest it on top of the beam and then going straight across to the other, other wall, okay? So this beam connected to these lolly columns are picking up the weight here. Now, it basically, what I'm really showing you this for, so you understand when we go to the, to, to the first floor of the house, so you kind of have a visual of what's going on behind the, behind the sheetrock. And my little punching bag. <clears throat> Now we're on the first floor. We're right above that beam. Actually, that beam is right here where I'm standing. And here we have a wall. Now generally, the walls inside the house, okay, they're gonna be load bearing uh, when they are parallel with the gutter. Okay, now please, if you don't have gutters, it, it, it still pertains. So you gotta use your imagination on this gutter thing, okay? So, so generally, this is gonna be in the middle of the house or damn close to it, okay? So uh, this is the beam under it. So we have a load bearing wall right here. Now up inside here, if you notice, uh-oh, how can it possibly be a beam up there? Well, it is, right? That's recessed in there and the way the ceiling joists tie into it with uh, brackets, okay? But check it out, move down here. All load bearing wall, load bearing. Big opening, right? Well, in here, we have a header. Just like that beam I showed you down in the basement. Well, we have one right here. It's built up nice and beefy, and it's picked up right here through jack studs going right down to the floor on top of that beam. So it just goes boom, boom, boom. So that's how it is. So if I wanted to remove this portion of the wall, well, I'm gonna have to put something in place to hold that weight up. Now, uh, if you have a single story house, even if you have a full basement, but a single story house, you would have the roof right up on here. Well, we have a second floor on top of this. So all our wood that's running like this, okay, which would be a, a ceiling joist, is resting on top of this wall, just like the basement, out to the outside wall, like I showed you in the basement, except those outside walls, they're made out of wood, of course. Uh, so anyway, let's get up to the second floor and we get a little bit more involved. Okay. We're on the second floor now. Now, we have our floor joists that we're standing on, okay? Uh, which, again, that wall I showed you is right below me here. So that wall is being picked up from the, from the, the beam in the basement, and this floor is being picked up by that wall that's on top of that. But what we have on top. Now, above us is the actual roof. So, if that's the actual roof, does that mean these walls are load-bearing? That's why I'm making a video. Okay. okay, this particular house, and a lot of them, they're built with roof trusses, 
All right, I'm sure you heard of that. You go up in the attic and the wood's running all different ways. It's got these metal plates that are holding all the wood together. That's called a truss. Trusses are, are good. They're not really good for attic storage, but they're good. I mean, it's up in the attic, it's roof, who cares, you know? And they do good. So what a truss does is designed, it's engineered to put, the, to, to put all the weight for the roof on the ends. So you have that outside wall, your load bearing wall right next to your gutter. It's actually attached to the end of that tail, right? Uh, on both sides. So in this particular house, we have our trusses that are running like this. So it's picking up on that wall all the way out to that. So are these load bearing walls? No, you take them right down, doesn't matter, and nothing's gonna happen. But now suppose you have a house and it's built with regular conventional framing. So you have two by eights, two by tens for your, for your rafters. That's a, somewhat a little different, not entirely, which I'll kind of show you in the next room because that's where the other room is built. Uh, so, as far as you know, load-bearing walls, just remember, typically, load-bearing walls run parallel with, with your gutters to, to your, your roof line. Uh, your per root walls perpendicular, like we have a one room here, we have a bathroom here, so there's a wall between it. Doesn't do diddly squat. Doesn't, it's not holding up nothing. So let's go in the other room and I'll show you something a little different. Okay, now I'm in a different room, my bedroom actually. Uh, now this is a more of a cathedral ceiling, all right? There are no collar ties, there's no, actually, actually I do have collar ties, though way up high though, okay? So if you see, uh, the, the house is built with the rafters, regular conventional lumber, two by tens in my case, and they're running down and sitting on top of the exterior walls, and they go, they go up. Okay, so there's no load all in here, that's why this is all wide open, all right? But now, let's move over here, this is where it gets a little bit funky. This is what you call a reverse gable on the house. So if you can picture those points when I was showing you in the beginning of the video, the outside. Okay, so yeah, that's weight. It's a roof and it's got, you know, three feet of ice on it. So that's a lot of weight, right? So, but all that weight is all being transferred out here down to, to the load bearing walls. So if I remove just this section of, of wall right here, and we had all that weight up there, oh, that'd be a problem. So anyway, that's pretty much the fundamentals of load-bearing walls. And typically, okay, doesn't, I mean, what I'm telling you, it doesn't mean uh, that that wall is not load-bearing. Just give you a little bit of a guidance to help you determine what's a load-bearing wall or not. Because, you know, unless you built the house to start tearing things up, you're really not going to know 150,000%. But anyway, that's how you about it, about it. And thanks for requesting the video. Keep sending those requests and I'll keep making the videos. What the heck? Film's cheap. Anyway, hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching.